welcome back to part two. I hope you took the chance to have a little intermission and get a little soda pop or a latte or whatever you needed for that. But just a little bit to continue on here for part two. This uh, statement about education uh, is so interesting, this guy makes, that really uh, teachers aren't really teaching kids how to think, but really teaching them what they should be doing for a living. Uh, and, and they become preachers of, of a dogma and of theology rather than of the facts or the skills that they need. And so uh, interesting that, that that certainly happens. And I would agree that every teacher is a proselytizer of their faith, right? That's why you know, we as, as homeschool fans or as Christian education fans, we, we, we think that Christian education is important to have a correct worldview because your worldview comes out in everything you teach. Uh, just It just does. And so I think this statement really fits with that as well. Um, I am trying to advance to the next slide, and it doesn't really want to. Uh, there we go. Here we go. This is interesting. Same guy. He says, the postmodernism rejects the notion that the purpose of education is primarily to train a child's cognitive capacity for reason in order to produce an adult capable of functioning independently in the world. In other words, education is not to teach you how to read or write and do math or even some particular trade skill or how to diagnose a medical problem, not not really teaching you how to be a capable adult and function in the world, but that the view of education is replaced with the view of education that is uh, to take an, an essentially indeterminate being and give it social identity. In other words, education is to tell you what you really are, not to train you how to do things or think, but what you are. So feeds, I think, we're really all into that gender identity stuff and everything that's just so big today is education trying to teach you what you are. They want to write on a blank slate. So you are a blank slate and they will give you right on it a social identity. All right, and then the last paragraph talks about the words. Education's method of molding its ling is, <coughs> excuse me, linguistic and so the language to be used is that which will create a human being sensitive to its racial, sexual, and class identity. And this gets kind of that political correctness stuff that the words kind of, the words are important, but they always change. Uh, we become sensitive to new words all the time. And so we get a longer blacklist of words we can't use uh, all the time because they identify with these identities. And so these words make a big difference. Uh, so just to talk about what the Bible says, of course, God created man. Uh, he initiated uh, marriage as one man, one woman. That's in Genesis 2, where he created them male and female and created them. Uh, physical intimacy is reserved for marriage. Uh, that's what the Bible teaches, the Ten Commandments, you know, no adultery. And uh, the other New Testament passage is about knowing how to possess your vessel or how to control your body, not just do what you want, but do what is right. And so that, that intimacy reserved for marriage. Uh, the family is a father, mother, and children. That's the way it's portrayed in Scripture. Uh, all the way through, all the commandments and, and epistles are Colossians and Ephesians talking about children to obey your parents and fathers to love and husbands to love and, and wives follow and all those things. It gives that structure of a father and a mother and uh, children. And so that is what the Bible considers sociology. Uh, government enables us to live together in peace in Romans 13 and Hebrews chapter, excuse me, Peter, first Peter chapter two. Uh, about that function of government, that there is that function, that need for government for us to live together peaceably. And church gives a structure to God's work together. The Great Commission in Matthew 28, and then 1 Peter about the church being the pillar and ground of truth. It doesn't invent truth, but it holds up truth uh, for the world to see. And so that's what the church is to be doing. And so there are these functions uh, of all those in, in, the, uh, in the Bible. 
Now, there's another issue here, the sociology and free will. The, there, are, there are those that would say, listen, we, we are just, we're behavioralists, or we just respond to what's around us. So we're, we just do what we've been taught, or we respond to a circumstance, and that's the way we do things. And it's kind of a, a fatalistic idea that we really aren't, don't have choices ourselves. We're just responding to what's around us. And, uh, but yet the Bible teaches as humans, we face the consequences of choice we make, choices we make in creating our society. So if we create a society that values dishonesty, our society is going to suffer the consequences of that. God gives us the responsibility to protect and to direct the so uh, I can't even say it. societal institutions he ordains and includes them uh, family uh, state and the church so <clears throat> oh there here we go your assignments next week do all those and feel free to email them to us uh, now in one sense I think we're supposed to meet the next time as like April the 8th is supposed to be a day we're supposed to per perhaps get back together uh, I don't know at all what will happen uh, by then, we could be back on regular pioneers. We could be back to this uh, total online doing it your own thing. So whatever. But anyway, keep safe. Trust God. Do what's right. Talk to you later, I guess.